All right. Uh, <clears throat> this time we're going to look at uh, copying the lab manual and editing it, recompiling it, and serving it on your own GitHub account. Uh, I've tried to make this video a couple times. The last time went pretty well, but I forgot to record it. So this time I'm, I'm going to go a little bit longer than normal um, and focus on some of the things to do with GitHub and getting the pipeline established between your GitHub account and your local computer to be able to move files back and forth. Uh, just to say a few things about this lab manual, it was written by myself um, and a few colleagues. There's 11 labs. Most of the labs have uh, some open data that you download and then exercises to work on that data. We've written four versions of each lab for R, Excel, SPS, and Jamovi. Um, let's look at Jamovi. In this version, there's no content for Jamovi, and actually that's true for all the chapters. And that's because the Jamovi content is in a different castle or a different... Um, GitHub repository. So we can jump over there. This is on Anjali Krishnan's GitHub, uh, GitHub account. The lab manual looks pretty much the same, but it's got all the Jamovi content. So to provide an example of how to copy our materials and edit it yourself and then put it up on your own GitHub account, I thought I'd start with uh, using Anjali's stuff as an example. So first thing, you could go to uh, either her account or my account, depending on which one you want to uh, copy. And these links are in the description of this video. But here I am. I'm logged into my own GitHub account, which, by the way, is free. If you don't have one, you could make one. And I've just navigated to this repository, statlab underscore Jamovi. So this is all the code we need to make the website. And um, this, this uh, works has been written in our studio using the book down package. So you need R and our studio to be able to modify and recompile this. Um, but let's talk about that process. So there's a few different ways to go about obtaining the source code and then using it on your own GitHub repository. Um, Maybe the easiest thing, or certainly something you could do to get working right away, is to fork the repository. So if I click this button, let's do it. We're going to fork it to Crump Lab, which is my main uh, GitHub account. There's some consequences to this way of copying. Um, Basically, those consequences are that if I make changes, so here we are now, we're in my GitHub, and we're looking at Statlab Jamovi here. If we looked at my repository list, um, is it there? Let's reload this. It should be there somewhere. What's it called? Statlab Jamovi. I thought it'd be at the top, to be honest. See if we can find it. Stat Lab Jamovi, there it is. So it's in my list. And yeah, it's like a file folder. And here it is, here's all the code. I'm going to show you how to download this to my local computer so I can compile and make changes to it. Uh, but I want to point out another thing here right now. Um, just about the structure of these things. Uh, we'll see that the RMD files, short for R Markdown, there's 11 of them, one for each chapter. If you were to go look at these things, they're just text files with the contents that we you might want to be editing. So you could go in here and um, change the text and recompile the, the website. Uh, note, if you're totally new to GitHub, when, when you have files on GitHub that are text files, you can actually edit them right here. If you click the pencil, you can, you can modify these files and um, save your changes right here. 
Now, when we open up this stuff in our studio, make changes and recompile, everything gets saved into the docs folder as HTML files. So these are the actual website files. Um, the index is the landing page index.html. And when we're looking at it this way, we can see the text of, of the landing or of this HTML file, but we're not seeing the website here. Of course, uh, it's pretty cool. A feature of GitHub repositories is that you can serve uh, content in a docs folder in a repository as a website. Uh, so let's just go ahead and turn, turn that on right now. Go to settings, scroll down to GitHub pages. I'm gonna choose the master branch which I'm on, and the Docs folder. Click Save. All right. If you scroll down again, you should see a link. And if you, I'm going to copy this link. Now, if we click here, we should go to the, I'm going to bring it over here. We should see the website and there it is cool it's now it's being served from crumplab.github.io statlab jamovi it's this it's it's i've just copied an, all of Andrew Lee's work i'm gonna use it for my own ends wow anyway um that's the link what i often will do right at the beginning of these projects is click this little wheel here and add the website link so that it's easy to flip back and forth between the website side of this repository and the source code side of this repository. All right, so, so far I've copied the repository by forking it and I've turned on the website side of things, but I haven't um, done anything else. I haven't downloaded any of this stuff to my computer and I haven't tried to modify any of the source code to change the website. So let's do that part now. Um, well, let's do the part where I try to get this on my computer uh, to make some changes. I use GitHub Desktop. That's a free program. You can go download it. When you do that, go to Preferences and uh, log in to your github.com account. So I should now be able to add uh, or clone. I think it's actually this time it would be clone. I want to clone a repository from github.com. So let's see if we can find the one that I just forked. Looks like it might be statlab. Stat. Stat. There it is. Um, oh no, why won't this work? So, ugh. okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna persist here. Um, <clears throat> normally I would pause the video, but these are, silly little github things so i'm sure it's making you really want to try this out but let's see if we can work through the problem um i want to add an existing repository no uh we could try a different way we could try it this way we can open this with github desktop let's try that Oh, maybe it's saying to me that I already have a folder here and it's got stuff in it. Oh, maybe that's true. So let me go check. I, I thought I deleted all this stuff already. There it is. My bad. Okay, here's a folder that shouldn't be there. I thought I 
So normally this wouldn't this wouldn't be a problem because you probably don't have that folder. Oh God. So let's let's do a reboot. <laughs> and uh, go back to add clone. Yep. Go to GitHub, find stats lab Jamovi. There it is. Okay. Now I want to basically I'm cloning this thing that's up on GitHub and it's going to get cloned in into this file folder on my computer. The problem before was I already had that folder there from a previous video attempt. So I deleted it. Now we're ready to go. So it's doing some cloning. It did the download. Um, now what is this? How are we planning to use this fork? Well, this is the thing about forking. If I make some changes on my side, on my copy, um, I can actually uh, push them or tell, tell Angelie about them, and um, she can bring those changes in from my version to her version if she wants to. And you can, if, if you're forking for that purpose to work as a collaborator, maybe you want to go uh, choose this option to contribute to the parent project. Or if you just kind of want to work on your own thing, uh, maybe do it for your own purposes. So here we, we did it. Um, so what do we see? Uh, notice that it shows up now on the side, StatLab Jamovi. And we can um, check it out on our own computer. So we press show in Finder. And now the files that were in the repository on GitHub dot com are in my folder here. Great. Uh, let's double click on stats lab manual dot r proj, the r project file. And that will open up our studio. And here we are. So now we're looking at the same files. And we could edit them and recompile the book. Um, to be honest, I can't remember what what packages you need for this. I definitely know that you need the book down package. That's called book down. So install that if you don't have this. Um, at the end of the day, when when you when everything's working, you should be able to hit the build button, build tab. Uh, click down on build book and and choose build uh, the Git book option. Happens pretty quickly, and here it is. We're this is the R Studio viewer pane. We're looking at the web book for the lab manual. If you click this little button, you can look at it on your computer browser. And notice here we're we're looking at the index file, which is the front page of the website, um, and this is a local file. It's not an HTTP address. So we're looking at the local computer version of this. Uh, so to talk quickly about making changes, uh, uh, I'm not going to go into great detail about how to write an R Markdown, but I'll just point out that each chapter has an R Markdown file. You could go and open one of those files up. And you'll see that these are basically text files. I'll probably do another video looking more closely at what's going on in these text files. But let me point out something that uh, you can add new words, right? So I just uh, added some new words. I press save. I want to show you something. When I go back to GitHub Desktop, um, every time we change files in this folder, we're going to see our changes. Uh, so lots of different files were changed when I compiled the book. I just changed graphing.rmd. I just added these words. And so you can see th those changes right here. Every time you make changes, you want to commit them um, with a note. Um, so I'm going to say some first changes. This is a silly note, but just to describe the process, I'm going to commit these changes. 
And, and whenever you do that, uh, you can go look at the history and you'll see the history of changes that have been made in this project folder. So this is basic version control. All right. So now, where, where am I now? Well, I've, I've downloaded this thing. I've made some changes on the local copy and I'm about to uh, push them back up to github.com. Um, let's take a look at GitHub now. So I'm going to view on GitHub. And if you look down the right side here, you can see some information about what's being changed when. So I just changed graphing.rmd. It says it's been changed about a minute ago. Great. I just recompiled the website. So some of these files in the docs folder were changed. Let's just click on graphing.rmd. These are the words I added, and now they're up on the website, or they're up in the GitHub repository. But I want to point something out. Um, those words are not in on the website for the lab manual, so that would be under lab one. I added some words here that are not appearing on the website. Now that's because I didn't actually um, go through all the steps to compile the book. I made the change in the source code, but I didn't rebuild the book. So I'll do that now. And you can just double check that if you go to the thing, the place where you made the change in chapter one here, you can see that I did add some new words here. And um, those changes are now reflected. You can see the file that's actually being changed now is the HTML file in the docs folder where it adds these new words. So I'm going to say add new, commit these changes, push. And if we reload this website, it can take 15 seconds, 30 seconds sometimes, we should be able to see those words are added. So I reloaded it, didn't quite happen yet. Um, if we go back here, we should see that the docs folder was changed 27 seconds ago. So that's good. Let's try reloading it again. Still not showing up. Um, sometimes you have to empty your cache to see it. Let's count to five. I'm going to have some of this coconut soda. All right. How about now? There we are. You So the uh, website's being updated. All right. So that's a basic overview of the, the pipeline here. You want to get a GitHub account. Um, and we, we talked about forking a repository, getting that forked repository onto your computer using GitHub desktop, um, making changes to your file locally, compiling it in our studio, and um, committing those changes here, then pushing things back up to the website. All right, um, notice that it says forked from Ange Krishnan statlab underscore Jamovi. Now, sometimes you want to do copying without having this fork connection. So you might want to just like run away with this stuff. You have no intention of trying to update one of the original repositories and you really want to go to town changing everything. Um, Let's talk about how you can unfork or do the copying in a way um, that doesn't involve forking. And I'm going to go through this just as some more examples of, of some of these nuances of GitHub. OK, now there's more than one way to do this. Um, 
let's say you're starting, let's go back here, you're starting at some repository that you want to obtain and copy. Um, let's first of all download this. So I'm going to download the repository as a zip file. Now that just takes all the source code uh, that's right here, all these files, I, and it's going to be unzipped as a folder in my downloads and it will have all these files. So here it is. I think I've done this a couple times, so there's the third time I did it. Here's all the files. Great. Uh, <clears throat> so what I want to do is kind of start fresh. I'm going to open up GitHub Desktop. I'm going to say, let's create a new repository and let's call this my new lab or whatever you want. Give it a description. Um, this will be the name of the repository. This will be where on your computer it's going to go. Um, you normally would initialize with a readme file, but I'm going to copy one in, so we don't need to do that. Uh, I also, I'm going to copy in these other things. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Press create repository. And, and now we've done it. Um, if we were to look at this, we'd see I've got a folder, my new lab, and there's nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of these folders where I downloaded Angeli's stuff. I'm going to copy all these files into the my new lab folder, which is in GitHub Desktop. Well, sorry, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's in this GitHub folder uh, that I made, and GitHub Desktop knows where it is. So let's check this out for a second. Notice that there's 155 changes inside of this folder because it started off having nothing in it, and I just copied a bunch of stuff into it. So it's now noticing that there are new things. So I'm going to call this the first commit. And, and that's great. So now I've got an, another Git folder on my computer and um, I'm keeping track of the commits and things that happened there. Uh, notice that my new lab is just on my computer right here. It's not on github.com. You can publish your repository very quickly by pressing this button and that's going to create a copy on github.com. So let's do that. I'm going to press publish. I don't want to keep this private because I want to display the website side of this also. Um, and let's just click publish. So now we're uploading this local folder to GitHub. And uh, if everything worked, it should give you this option to view it on GitHub. So let's do that. So here we are, uh, CrowdClab My New Lab. This is a different Git repo. Um, it's, we could do the same thing here. We could go to settings. We could uh, go down, turn on GitHub pages again. Uh, I won't go through those steps here. I just wanted to demonstrate uh, this additional way to uh, copy the code, create a new Git folder, and uh, push it up to github.com. All right, so I think I'll end this video and think about the next one to do. And why not play out with some vocoder string sounds?